are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you a little bit about our current sponsors, uh, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. As you well know, if you've been following This is Oklahoma, they've been a huge part of this podcast. So this podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Also, for the podcast, a new sponsor, RCB Bank. The home market is booming and RCB Bank is here for you. If you're in the market to buy a home, a mortgage pre-qualification will make the process much easier. Talk to one of our mortgage professionals today. RCB Bank. That's my bank. With approved credit, terms and restrictions apply, member FDIC, equal housing lender, RCB Bank, NMLS 798151. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode down at the Bedford Studio with Valona Michael. Um... I think this is, I mean, this is, there's a lot of good things that are going to come from this podcast. Uh, mostly the, the amount of laughs that we're going to, like, <laughs> I mean, just from a personal standpoint, we're going to laugh our heads off. I have the feeling we're going to do that. Uh, people listening, if you don't know who my guest is, you've probably been living under a rock. Uh, but if you're in the PR world or in the marketing world or anything on social media in the Oklahoma City area, then you will know definitely your work. Maybe not who you are, but clearly know the people that you work with and for and do amazing things. Um, but before we dive into all that cool stuff, tell us a little bit about who you are and what your background is and how you get to uh, you know this amazing state that we live in. Wow, that's a really general question, Mike. <laughs> Where to um, start? Where to start? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for even asking me to be on the podcast. Of course. I'm honored. Um uh, yeah, my name is Valona Michael. I've owned a full-service marketing agency mm-hmm. for 13 years. Um, if we're going to start from the start, Let's I was it. born in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, which is always a shocker for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am full-blooded East Indian. My parents came mm-hmm. on a boat in the 60s. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it kind of just started from there. My dad met a man who they became friends and connected with on this boat. Uh-huh. The man happened to be from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. So that's how you And get so you. they befriended wow. my, my parents. My mother yeah. did not know a lick of English. She was 19 years old. Yeah. I didn't know any English. If you met her now, she'd talk your head off, and I can't imagine a day where my mother so didn't that's know where you English. Get it from. That's it. Oh my gosh. Seriously, <laughs> let me put that on a podcast so my mom is proud. Family dinners, I'm all sure. All of it is her. Yeah. All of everything, the, the connections and all that, the, my vibe, like yeah. it comes from my mother's side of, of the family. But she, um, yeah, so this family kind of yeah. adopted my parents and. Come we had Christmases Fisher. and thanks Thanksgivings and I mean my parents lived in a lot of different places but at one mm-hmm. point in their life they were in Kingfisher and that's where I was born and yeah. I'm I'm the baby I'm the third why, of, of why three did siblings. mom and dad come out here give their kids a better education yeah right that's why immigrants come out here yeah. um, and visas they did it the right way they're both American citizens by yeah. the way <laughs> I remember my mother studying yeah. for the test and I'm thinking I don't know that I know all of the answers to right. these questions yeah yeah yeah. I need but, to take that test yeah. you haven't done it yet you haven't done it no, yet no not yet no oh, I need to do it yeah. yeah you gotta do it so yeah my parents um, did it all the right way and, and raised three incredible children um, my older brother is an orthopedic surgeon mm-hmm my sister is in web securities and I am in marketing. <laughs> Anyone that has any kind of cultural ethnic background love, knows right, why I say exactly. it that way. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who's thinking just like, so is this, you know, it, 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 who the person you're talking to, like, you know, when you're an immigrant family, right? It's like the three big things is engineering, yes. you're a doctor, and then maybe teaching, right? You're a professor, right? And yeah. You, you know, we've had, I've had plenty of guests on the podcast who've the same thing. It's like, yeah, we went the other route. We wanted to be our own social butterflies, and we went found something that we really enjoyed. And yeah, the conversations that you've had with your parents, like, no, I want to go do this, right? And like, oh, what? completely was not happy about that. <laughs> Which it didn't matter. I went to the right. university of Tulsa. I paid for college completely yeah. by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm really proud of that. Um, at the moment, it wasn't the best. You know, when you're 18 or 19 right. years old, and you're sitting here trying to afford just a two dollar Wendy's. Yeah bacon cheeseburger because that was my favorite and proving that you can do it yeah it kind of that actually kind of helped Mm -hmm. but um yeah they were not happy about the marketing they are now they're happy now they see it and my mom sees it because it is it's get married have children Mm -hmm. have them all two years apart literally i did everything by the book didn't mean to it just sort of happened that way and 
Yeah, but then what do you do? Right. You yeah. know? Yeah, and it's such a difference, right? There's so many, especially coming from India, this like from the UK it's kinda similar. Yeah. They're, they're not too far away culturally, but when you come in from your parents come in from such a different culture, right? Different upbringing, the whole thing. And then Completely. they're raising you as they would have back home. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, No, I wanna go do my thing. Like and yeah. it's it I'm sure it was I mean, there's so many stories, and not just on the podcast, right, but of, of just immigrant stories and better lives. And, you know, they, like I said, they become doctors and, 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 and into education or whatever it is. And because education is the route to success in immigrant families, right? That's what they think. Yeah. Yes, that's what they see and that's mm-hmm. what they think. And thank goodness my parents are pretty Americanized. So, yeah. like, I mean, we ate yeah. meat and drank and all that stuff. Like, right. So they're really cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, with my kids, I have three, and I – teach them that you just do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I want you to be passionate because I get to live a passionate life in my work Mm -hmm. and it just makes such a difference. I don't, the money will come. The money, you will pay the bills eventually. It'll, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll get it figured out. So I very much am like that with my kids. I I very much tell them you don't have to get married. You don't even Mm -hmm. have to have children. Yeah. Um, Please no hate posts on that. I just think society puts too much pressure on people Mm -hmm. and then they think they're inadequate. And I just think that's so sad. Was it kind of, culturally for you was parents expecting was it like arranged marriages or was it like oh, expected gosh. like how, I mean what was that pressure like growing up here no. in Kingfisher too right which I'm sure was not <laughs> well, slim and let me, yeah we went from Kingfisher to Fort Smith yeah lived in Fort Smith for five years for five years we were the Indian family that owned a motel yeah um Love all my motel owning Indian friends but yeah. I'm just saying for five years we were we were them and then we moved to Tulsa um, where, I w- where I was picked from private school in Fort Smith, Arkansas, really tiny, mm-hmm. incredible private school, yeah. Catholic school with nuns, priests. Like, if I'm going to do Catholic school and pay if for that, I want nuns and priests. The, the whole I want thing. the slapping yeah. of the ruler. Yeah. Um, and then and then moved to Tulsa, went to Jinx. So right. then you're picked and you oh, go to yeah. like Jinx and right. it's and huge now you're like, and I, I, it's into yeah. fashion and oh my gosh, your style and mm-hmm. all these things. You go from uniforms to, and to, and clicks and to everything these clicks else. and yeah, like yeah, that yeah. stuff. I started cussing. I'd never yeah. cuss. Like, there's just all these things. Great school then. Yeah. So, great um, football record. Great, great yeah. football record. And then in the middle of high school, they moved to Oklahoma City and I went to PC North. So that's where I graduated. Graduated. Great high school. Okay. Yeah. And then I went to University of Tulsa. But anyway, so, yeah. but yeah, getting raised. I mean, they didn't, they just wanted me to get married. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course they wanted me to marry an Indian boy. Right. But as I tell many people out there, there were maybe a handful of cute ones in Oklahoma. <laughs> Dated them all. I tried. Right. Yeah. They were great guys. It just didn't work out, yeah. you know? And I told my parents, I mean, you should have lived in Texas or California or New York if you wanted me to marry an yeah. Indian guy. Right. Just didn't happen. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, my parents actually weren't arranged. They fell in love. Uh-huh. They were neighbors. So they come that from that background. Of, that did you a lot of favors. It did, yeah. Up, right? But, you know, I have lots of friends that have parents that were arranged yeah. and they're completely happy. Yeah. There is something kind of to it. I, there, I, I mean, I see it. There's some, like I said, some points of me is like, I mean, I get it. But other points, like, you're like... I mean, you kind of have to have that initial attraction. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how tough, that really right? works. But I mean, and you know, I mean, there's plenty of people out there who are like, yeah, this like, you see, you know, you see like a beautiful woman with this dude who's just like <laughs> twice her age, but he's got a ton of cash. So she's happy. Oh, right? stop. Happy. Oh, stop right? stereotyping. But like if you're the That's same awful. age and there's, and, I mean, it's true, right? There's yeah. plenty of people out there. But like if you, yeah, like that was there any... So there wasn't any pressure for you to do that. And when no, you, so, which no. Is probably, it was just yeah. get married. Yeah. She still preaches that to people. Yeah. I keep telling my mother, stop telling stop. people yeah. that they need to get married and have children. Right. Like, it's not yeah. the end all and be all. What so, was it the same for brothers and sisters as well? Yes, like all of us. All yeah. three of us. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, all three of us. Um, but none of us married an Indian person. So <laughs> <laughs> that didn't end up happening. But yeah. I mean, that's just life. It happened. But, but probably, we're happy. Yeah, so you've that's probably what... been to plenty of Indian weddings anyway. Oh, uh, like, yeah. We, I had an Indian wedding. So that's something. Yeah. I did have that. That was right. the Friday night was the Indian wedding. And then the Saturday night was the American wedding. And really? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought, yeah. I didn't know that yeah. I was going to have the whole Indian. We- I, Indian weddings are so beautiful. <gasps> yes, oh, they are. They mean like everything is symbolism. Right. They mean so much. Mm-hmm. And they're so beautiful. And so now my husband was like let's go put let's the turban do on do yeah. the whole thing and so he did and we had i mean it was a small it was only a few hours right because you weddings in the year are like seven days yeah and so we did we had this indian wedding and it was amazing and beautiful and yeah. then we had the american one the next day and same place no well i mean in tulsa but different locations okay 
Um, the yeah, because yeah, the Indian wedding, like they, they usually you want a, like an empty room because they bring everything into right. it and create it. Good, you know, good. Indian weddings, you have a snack in between. We have like we serve pistachio ice cream after an hour and a half. Oh, I need to go to an Indian wedding. <laughs> this sounds like so much fun. Well, they're so long, you know, and well, you're sitting yeah, there for so long. So you serve a snack in between, which is fun. <laughs> just be walking the aisles to snack. Yeah, everyone's giving snacks, and we're just up on like the stage, <laughs> like doing our thing. Um, and then so the American good. wedding, yeah, was the next night at, at a glass chapel in, in yeah. Tulsa. It was awesome. So long time ago. Very long time ago, yeah. so 22 years ago. Good memories, though. We, I mean, we kind of didn't do that, but we did. We had one, we had a wedding here, and then we went back to Wales the following oh, weekend. See? Well, we went back to, we had a wedding on Saturday, flew to Wales on Monday, and then the following Saturday, then we were in Wales and had like a bit of a reception, really. Didn't have a wedding, we had a reception. But we, Taryn and my her, my my in-laws, we took everything that we wore in the wedding back. So yeah. she, she took her dress back. So we had right. like wedding photos in right. the same, this is going to sound super British and super UK of me and very like, whatever but we had our wedding photos in the same castle my parents had their wedding photos <gasps> in, right which was like oh, which was awesome but to it. me like like and people if you've never heard of wales or the uk like wales has more castles per square mile than any other country in the world really so wikipedia says that so i might not be true on that <laughs> but i've been telling people the same thing so it's so like there's like five in my hometown right and they're not just like like some of them are ruins but like they're pretty much most of them are still like they're not working, but there's enough of it there to still look like a castle. So like, wow. so you climb and you, you know, if you fell off, you probably hurt yourself. So we went to the same castle. My parents had their photos in, which like my wife was just like fairy tale. Like, well, awesome. of course. Um, but it, so it was good that we did that. But it's obviously not like back to back days. That's intense. Yeah, it was a lot. It was yeah. a lot of work. But by the time the American wedding happened and we had that reception, <laughs> we just partied our butt of off. Your mouth. No, you know what's cool about the American reception is that you know most people they don't invite they would invite everyone to the wedding and then you not go the, yeah, yeah, yeah. less on reception because it's money, right? right? We paid for our wedding all by ourselves, and I wanted every single person I knew, like mm-hmm. anybody that meant anything. It is the only yeah. time. Yeah. That you have everyone I that, wish ha- that, that tell yeah. all your stories Looking in back one at room. Mine, I wish I would have done. You, you wish you over invite, right? Yeah, the like, money. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. money comes and right. goes. Like before you know it, yeah. you're older and it didn't matter, that you know? Sense. And so, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So you're in Tulsa then. You go to TU. Yeah. Um, what do you go to TU for? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, I'm going to share parts of the story that I can. um, (laughs) No, I started um, as engineering. I thought I was going to be a math teacher to junior high and high school kids. Um, of course, my fam- you know, my parents were like, you're not going to make any money being a teacher. Like, you should be right. a teacher, right? Because it's about yeah. paying my bills. Yeah. And But then my dad was happy it was math. Of course, So he's yeah. like, go yeah. into yeah. engineering. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, Super great. Fair. So I start, um, you know, I, I was in the Greek life, mm-hmm. and I was a Kappa, for any, any Kappas out there. And um, started in engineering. So I had Calc 1, Calc 2, Chem mm-hmm. 1, Chem 2, Labs, Computer Science. That sounds like hell to me. Yeah, anyone that knows me <laughs> knows that I enjoy a beverage. Yeah. And oh my gosh, I partied my butt off my right. freshman year. Like I'm I mean, free and having a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was not a good combination. No. I'm just going to say that right there. So it wasn't a good combination. Um, and. You know, I mean, I guess it's part of my story, so I do need to go there because it's part of it. But yeah. and I actually just told a client about it last week, and I thought, you know, I could tell people this because I'm successful now. Right? So it yeah. Really now matter. it's okay. You're right. But when you're trying <laughs> yeah, to find a job, it's not a story to tell. I practically flunked out my freshman year. Uh-huh. I partied hard. Yeah. And quite honestly, knowing what I know now, I would have done it even more. I mean, life is short. Who right. cares about your GPA after your first couple jobs? Yeah. My children who are listening to this, who are about to go to I college. need you. <laughs> yes, I need you to still worry about your GPA. Yeah. Um, we're all kids out there. You still yeah. have to kind of worry. But um, but I was also in a profession that I didn't, I mean, I was taking classes that had no right. interest to me. Why yeah. would I want to go? Uh-huh. Um, I remember my Calc 2 professor calling me like the last day of class and just saying, I'm giving you a 70 and I have no idea why. <laughs> Because <laughs> I just showed up for testing. Yeah. And so, um, no, but but the part of the story, why I have to say this is because then, you know, you go home the summer after your freshman year and you stay with your family. And um, I waitress to put myself through college. Um, also internships later on um, in the higher years, but I waitressed. And so I was waitressing, making money, but I had lost a $7,000 grant because my yeah. GPA. Yeah. Who knew that you had to have a minimum GPA to keep right. this yeah. stuff? Yeah, but people are going to give you money. You have to, like... Do you okay, kind of yeah. have to at least make yeah, a 3.0. a little bit back. And so I lost a $7,000 grant. Yeah. Well, I thought, 
I'm not going to be able to go back to TU. I'm not going to be able to go back to my life and my friends. What am I going to do? So yeah. I continued to work. I went to UCO for a semester, tried business classes, made a 4.0, mm-hmm. yeah. and made enough money, reapplied to TU, and got back in the spring. So I was yeah. only gone for one semester. Got back in the spring, took business classes, loved it, made yeah. great grades. Found a passion. I found it. Like, just, yeah. I, yeah, I found some of the passion. I found more of it in my internships uh-huh. because there was a lot of market research. Real like, world. Real world. Yeah. I mean, for anyone in business, I'm yeah. not, right. I mean, I even hate to say this, but I didn't learn anything in my no, college classes. It's very, right. the market research class maybe, but that's yeah. about it. Unless it's practical in like real time, this is yeah. where you're, you're studying and you're putting an impact or starting a business or whatever it is, like making, like, yeah. The I mean, I feel like that. college is more just about you becoming a person. I agree. And becoming yeah. a responsible right. person, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that definitely happened. But, um, yeah, so I ended up coming back, had a great few more years, uh-huh. graduated with a marketing degree, and yeah. then worked for a database marketing company in downtown Tulsa after uh-huh. that, which was absolutely incredible yeah. experience. It's actually what I thought my agency was going to be. Right. And we work with financial institutions around the United States, like Citibank, uh-huh. Interest Bank, like all the different banks, Bank of Oklahoma, yeah, yeah. everybody, on their strategy. So they would give you a database. Gotcha. You'd give them all these you yeah. know, goals and, hey, this right. is what we should do. And I'm making it sound fancy, but we actually created junk mail. Okay. That's what we did. Yeah. We said, okay, yeah. so these are the markets that need to have the convenience checks. Yeah. These are the markets that need that. Open a free checking account and get it. Right. You look at the cooler. age groups or whatever. You and do just, all yeah, the stuff and yeah, you yeah. strategize and you code everything. So we would create yeah. all the direct mail, yeah. which takes so much work, you guys. When I, th- I don't see direct mail the same way as everyone right. else. Like junk mail, like... Oh my gosh, I had press checks at two and three in the morning to go yeah. make sure that the address line was correct, that the stamp right. was on there correctly, that everything it's a looked big right. Whoopsie on money if you did that. Really like, big. Yeah. 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 And so then everything was coded. And so then when every, you know, when people would come in to open their accounts and things mm-hmm. like that or whatever cross selling we would do, they would put it all in the in their yeah, systems database, and then yeah. we'd look at the database at the end of the year and we would say this right. worked, this didn't work. Yeah. And that's exactly what I do for a living now, except right. no one has data on their clients. No one has, <laughs> no, no one has a database anymore. People yeah. don't have a lot of like databases, though everybody should gather yeah, should. client information because yeah. As I tell all my clients, anyone that walks in the door, it's much easier for me to get them to repeat yes. than to go find you 5,000 yes, people. So um, anyway, that's what I thought the company was going to be. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's on there. I, that's a service I provide, but it's not, but it's not the major. The yeah. Where, so why, like, it seems like you just fell in love with Tulsa as well. Yeah. Like, great city. Yeah. So where does that, I mean, obviously, like, going to college and having a good time, but, I mean, there's, there's, an, there's a lot of things outside of college at Tulsa that, that are great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible city. Yeah. And, you know, I was a newlywed there. I got married there. I had all three mm-hmm. children there. Um, so got to become kind of a mother, yeah. an adult. Everything mm-hmm. happened there. And then um, we moved here 15 years ago. Gotcha. And I didn't know a soul. Mm-hmm. Didn't know anybody. Yeah. You know, I didn't go to college here. Didn't have any agency work here. Right. Didn't marry anyone you with a fabulous last name. could have worked in Nashville. Name. It didn't matter. You it didn't Tulsa. matter. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. yeah, it didn't matter. I loved yeah. Tulsa so much. Mm-hmm. And then got here and had, you know, I had three kids under four and a half. And I am I am a full-time stay-at-home mom of 20 years. I still am a full-time yeah. stay-at-home mom right now. Even though the teenagers don't want to talk to me, I am still their mother 24-7. <laughs> yeah. Get them to everywhere they need to be. Right. And I am a full-time stay-at-home mom. And that is the hardest job on earth, mm-hmm. is to be a stay-at-home mom. So shout out to all you guys. But yeah. Um, I will say it's, you know, I will say I also think it's really hard if you're a full-time, if you're a working mom outside of the home and you work eight to five and then you come home and have to then be the mom from five to right. ten. Yeah. That's pretty excruciating. Yeah. Um, Especially with games and football Yeah, and just everything. You're just, yeah, yeah, you're juggling it all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then and I think my kids were um, seven, five, and three when I started my company 13 yeah. years ago. What made you just decide to think you know what I'm, I'm gonna do this I'm, I'm gonna do it on my own I'm in a new city uh, I, I can do this from my previous experiences the business issue I need it I mean yeah I'd like to say that I preconceived this idea right? but I didn't yeah. um, my kids were taking um, lessons art lessons from an upside down artist that I actually okay. met at the art festival that year yeah. and art had been taken out of our elementary schools because it's budgeted differently so they can remove it which I yeah. hated so being that I am of East Indian descent I still do think it's very important for the arts to be in my children's lives because I think it's a stress reliever 100%. <laughs> from me pushing yes. them into math and science yes. a little bit here's I'm like, a paintbrush yes. here's paint it's a little, knock yourself out yeah 
yeah, like, yeah, yeah. or what if that was their passion? You know, sure. I mean, my, my kids yeah, were yeah, actually yeah. pretty talented at art. So, um, yeah, she was doing upside down art and I just yeah. went up to her and asked her, Hey, do you do lessons? And she ended up living two miles away from me. Oh, perfect. So I took my seven year old there. Yeah. My five year old started, um, pretty soon after, and she was going to open an art gallery mm-hmm. in Moore, Oklahoma. Yeah. And I just started talking to her and out came all of this previous experience of what you've done just knowledge that I hadn't used in eight years and um, she said well let me just hire you and I thought oh well I better have a company better stop my own I better do something I mean a consultant's the best job for a a stay at home mom because I can be flexible I can do everything I can yeah you work from your phone you work from yeah so um, so I just started it started the LLC and off you go. Off I went. And I mean, it was slow. I mean, I didn't. Well, yeah. No, but you got to prove yourself and yeah. do all that. But I wasn't out hustling. I had three right. little kids. I yeah, was just doing what like I could It's not like I'm going to be able to make a career out of this at that point, right? Yeah, it's like, I mean. This is some extra income or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I mean, I barely. I probably made a couple hundred bucks that year. Like, right. I didn't even. Yeah. It wasn't anything like that at all. I had no idea what was about to happen mm-hmm. to me until two years later. And I walked yeah. into an Uptown 23rd District meeting that I saw on Facebook. And really? my entire life changed. I so, was scrolling Facebook yeah. in 2009. No, 2011. Yeah. And I really do enjoy all of those restaurants and businesses on sure. Uptown 23rd. And so I somehow saw this invitation to come out. Anyone's welcome. And we met at what was Just then like being a, built. Just like a meeting for whoever. Yeah, that's how like, it starts. Yeah. You know, districts and communities kind of start that way. It's gotcha. like, hey, a call for anyone that wants to volunteer because you sure. need help. You have no money. Yeah. And um, this was in what was being built as Granddad's Bar, okay, which was then Rockford, which is now the Eleanor. Mm-hmm. And um, Greg and Jennifer Seal were the owners. And I walked into this. I mean, I knew nobody. Right. You know, I took my minivan and I parked it outside <laughs> Queen's Wigs and thought, I'm just going to yeah. go walk in here and yeah. see. And you walk in and there's like 50 people. The energy is electric. Right. You've got I'm just sitting there like, this is crazy. You business owners, you have neighbors, you have city council yeah. people, you have everybody. I mean, mm-hmm. just everybody there, and it's so cool. So I'm just kind of sitting back. I've written my name on a list and my contact info, and I'm just sitting there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, where does this, what are they doing? Right. You know? Who's and I'm like, oh, they're thing. like making a district. This yeah. is so cool. At this point, I think they had kind of gotten the logo. The logo that everybody sees mm-hmm. now is, is pretty much finalized, so that's yeah. where they were. Um, but they needed help, and they needed, this is how every community starts. Yeah. And it takes a lot of volunteers. I mean, for anyone out there, I cannot say enough mm-hmm. about the volunteers that it has taken to get every single district right. that, like, around you up and running. It's mm-hmm. a lot of volunteer. Um, the city had just started... I think very recently a CDRP program yeah. by Kim Cooper Hart, which I applaud a lot. It's that is why you all have all these districts mm-hmm. is because of that. They give you seed money. Gotcha. They give you um, some some in, in the grand scheme of things is the smallest budget. Right, but it's a start. But you can do it? so much, yeah, and so yeah, we yeah. did. I would see their financials, and you know, after that meeting, the the marketing. Um, the marketing guy, Matt Rawls, um, called me and said, hey, I see that you do marketing. Do you yeah. want to volunteer? And I'm like, acting like I have all these clients. I didn't have one yeah. client. Nothing. Like maybe. Zip, nothing. Yeah. I was like, I guess I'll, yeah, <laughs> sure, why not? And I volunteered, and I started, and about three months later, we were in a marketing meeting, and they're yeah. like, somebody needs to handle our social media. And I remember Chris Lauer with Big Truck Tacos. And I do name drop a lot here, you guys. And that's just because I'm so proud of every single person I've ever yeah. met. I'm when just you also proud know to them even, personally as When well. you know them, right. yeah. Right. yeah. I hope no one cares that I'm name dropping right. their name. But like, like, yeah, they're part of my story. Yeah. And yeah. they don't really know right. what my story was. I didn't talk about my kids. Yeah. You don't talk about that stuff no. when you're just starting out. You don't want anyone to think, oh, she's going to have a PTA meeting. She's not going right. to be able to come. Yeah. So I'm kind of really proud of the fact of people that maybe did know me back then and go, wow, she did all of that and had these little mm-hmm. kids that she was running around like a crazy person. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, he said, hey, Valona knows we have no money. Just just hire her. <laughs> and so, which is true. I mean, right. for like hundreds of dollars, like yeah. nothing, you guys. Yeah. And I said, sure, why not? And here's the thing that happens. I take over social media. Well, then all of a sudden, I take over membership because mm-hmm. the membership is kind of yeah. the purpose of it is marketing. So then all of a sudden I'm introducing myself to all these different Everybody. people and all these business owners and and the social media takes off. And I mean, we had 1,500 followers between Facebook and Twitter. We weren't on Instagram. Mm-hmm. 
And so I ended up working with them for a few years, started their Uptown Un- Uncorked fundraising event. First yeah. one was in the Gold Dome. Probably will never happen again. That was Sadly. amazing for 400 people that got to attend. That was yeah. an experience. Um, Oklahoma History Center was the second one. Did their membership, left them with $85,000. That's amazing. And left yeah. and, and kept going and, and just... What happened was during that time, I had other people then saying, hey, I need you at Class and Curve. I need you at Nichols Hills Plaza. I need you here. Yeah. I just, they just kept yeah. bringing me business. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, to this day, that's what's happened to my business. Right. I just am referred and over and yeah. over again. Or from someone volu- just meets me. Just from volunteering for that one Just event. from volunteering. Yeah. And I'm big into volunteering. I mean, I'm, I'm a big mm-hmm. believer in doing that if you can. Um but then the PR also got built. I didn't think yeah. I was going to get into PR. Right. I don't yeah. have any. I don't even know what PR is. <laughs> right? Like, so that's like, when you I text do, the newscasters yeah. and like, say, hey, so I I've got PR. this story. Yeah. Yeah. It's and like, and it's I kinda, so many things. There's yeah. so many things. And, and so, yeah, my company really just does all of it, but with yeah. a really strategic foundation mm-hmm. where we're not just going to go by the seat of our pants. Right. And so then you've like got. There's a goal at the end of this. There's always or a goal. Let me figure out. Whatever it is, the deadline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're working towards, like, previous one, obviously, you know. Mark was on for the homeland and that was the new store that you just opened up like that was a perfect example right of working you know to a deadline of we're opening this new store whereas it could be you know uptown it could be homeland it could be whoever Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be necessarily around food but you know like hall of fame is obviously you know oklahoma hall of fame is a client the skirvin hotel is a client Mm -hmm. um yeah, I've had I've had numerous clients from all different facets yeah. of all different levels. Um, it's pretty astonishing, That's actually. Awesome. Um, so that, yeah, like your whole business kicks off from that point, yeah. from volunteering and putting in those years and meeting all those people. And there's a lesson there, isn't it? That like, you know, if you're a new business owner or someone want to start a business, and most people who start businesses on the side they're they are on the side they're not your full-time gig so you can you got more flexibility and you can afford to volunteer somewhere just to get the connection right and build that and like you said you know two or three years later you've met all these people because you've donated so much of your time and but made a real impact that then you get to get the re- and not not doesn't always happen like this but because of doing a good job you've got mm-hmm. all the impact and all that you've had the rewards from that come back and like you said still today people give you business I mean like my 10 phone, years later yeah I mean it's you been know? 10 years and yeah. I'm the phone just keeps ringing which, which I'm awesome. so proud of I'm I'm I don't care how small or how big the business is I am proud of every one of them mm-hmm. of having all clients because yeah. They took a chance on me and I get to be part of their story. And I yeah. just, I think connection is huge for me and I didn't realize it. I learned a lot about myself through my company. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that I was so big into connection. It made me understand why it's really hard for me to let go of people. Like, <laughs> if like there's a friendship or something that goes yeah. awry and I'm just upset, of course you're upset about it. But like for me, it's like all the memories went with them and yeah. it breaks my heart. And so I love, I'm like you, Mike, I love hearing people's stories. Mm-hmm. And so if someone, if someone called me up right now and yeah. said, hey, will you meet up with me? I will rearrange my entire day right. to meet with them. Yeah. Because not for business purposes, no, but, but because there curiosity. is a story there that yeah. I am needing to hear Yeah. for whatever reason. Or I'm supposed to connect them with someone else that mm. I know. There's a reason they reached out. There's a right. reason someone's reached out. Mm. And so um, I have a really hard time saying no. Yeah. Last week I had somebody um, that was DMing me, asking me to meet, asking me to meet. And I was like, okay, I don't, I mean, I am starting to get really, really busy. Yeah. And so I do need to start saying <laughs> last no. Last week was probably one of the busiest. Oh my gosh, I was yeah. so busy last week. And, and she she wanted to meet and I said, so I tried to do kind of those like questions you do. Okay, well, do you have a budget? Uh-huh. And do you kind of went like that kind of agency, typical yeah. agency route? And she, you know, she didn't know what she wanted to do. Like she didn't know she had a budget. And yeah. She just wanted to meet. And, and she mentioned something that triggered me in our conversation back and forth on DMs and she said, oh my gosh, I don't want to waste your time and it, she got me right there. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. I don't want anyone to think I'm, oh my gosh, I'll meet with anybody anytime. I don't care. Like, you're not wasting my time. You're on that pedestal, right? It's like, you must be so busy. Yeah, I I know. I'm not, I'm not like that though. No, there's always time. There's always a Zoom call if I can't meet you in person. But, so of course we're meeting next week because I can't, I don't want anyone to ever think it's a waste of time and that's not what my agency's about. It's not like a typical all about the money or, or anything. Hours, Not blah, that there's blah. they're like yeah. that here because I have a lot of friends that own mm-hmm. a variety of agencies yeah. that are incredible. But they're probably a lot more corporate structured. They're a little bit more. They have a lot of employees. Than, yeah. They've got you know they have overhead. Right. Yeah. I have a couple employees that are part time. Yeah. That's it. You know, and my employees, my 
Um, they're part time, but just because it's extra money for them. Yeah. I don't want to be responsible for somebody's right. yeah. mortgage income. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. So I tend to hire people that are in their late twenties that are moms mm-hmm. that understand marketing, but yeah, like are older. Sorry yeah. for all the youngins out there. I love you guys, but no, but you're right. I'm raising you too, so yeah. I, I don't need to be around the young people all the time because I'm raising you. Yeah, but but, but like that person that reached out, you, you know, that could be that could be a huge thing, right? That could be like she might have an amazing story, and and even though she has no idea what she's doing now, she might have a really cool idea or a product that you you never know. And that curiosity, yeah. like. Yeah, burns, didn't it? Like, if you I don't, can't take it. Can right. you like right? What if Same. you don't can't meet with someone? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just like, oh, right. that's probably somebody. I think because mm-hmm. because the company has been developed in such a way about meeting people, right? And just being at the right place at the right time, it's mm-hmm. really hard for me not to go yeah. to an event or go to something because I feel like every time I go somewhere, I meet someone incredible, and I think mm-hmm. if I hadn't come, I would never yeah, you'd have met never that have person. The connection. And yeah. maybe and there was just, that connection right. was necessary. And the next time you see that person, even you know, it's it when you go to a connection like that, it's probably in a casual setting, right? It's oh, kind of like you know, it's like, it's like, like born and brewed or over drinks, <laughs> right? But then the next time you see them, it's probably in a more like it's in a more structured setting. Yes, and they recognize you, and then that's when you do business right mm-hmm. it's not like you know you're never going to do business on that first kind of meeting oh, but never. Like, you're having a drink you're having a good time oh I remember you well you know like people like we said I said this to you last time people hear you before they see you for the most part right like oh, we'll my somewhere. voice shows up in the room before I do as <laughs> quiet awesome. as I try you know yeah. when I meet new people I try so hard to like be someone else and I'm like it just never works I can't be that yeah, tame can't like, be that person that yeah. tame filtered person nope, no everything pretty much just comes out of my mouth you should never do that anyway right? I mean you Tell should just be you yourself are. everyone should be authentic 100% I mean it's hard and yeah. it exactly. is what it is but that's that's what I've learned through this too is I'm like you know people call me and they want to work with me because they like me yeah. which is really gratifying it's so weird to like, hear I, so I, people weird. say that to me sometimes and yeah I'm just you're like, amazing like what, what, why do you think that right like it's you know because because we just do what we do right we don't worry too much about like who we are like it's just kind of the personalities that we have it's like we are who we are and like we're comfortable in our own skin we never really worry too much about like you know what someone thinks yeah I mean I'm now in my 40s so I'm pretty comfortable <laughs> in my skin and I mean, everyone knows that the older yeah. we get, the more, you know, the more shit we're not going to take. Right, yeah, true. And so, um, yeah. But yeah. but even, even like, even I had two people approach me on Sunday mm-hmm. when I was working at a client event, and two people approach me with their businesses and say, hey, I want to meet you. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's great. But yeah. hey, if it doesn't work out, don't worry about it. Let's just meet and right. have coffee. Yeah, and then like, I I'm know very you. always yeah. like, I'm always right. like, you don't have to work with uh-huh. me. You yeah. might not like me once we do coffee. But <laughs> I don't think has really ever happened to me yet, right. but hey, I just yeah. never want them to feel pressured. Like right. we could meet and you might not feel the vibe mm-hmm. or you, I might yeah. not be able well, to give you what you need. Yeah. And so that happens. Don't worry about it. Let's just go have exactly. coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you Tom, lose clients too. I've, you know? Yeah. I mean, Losing I've done that clients. a couple of times. It's kind of, I, it's kind of funny. Like I find it funny sometimes when I lose a client. You do now, but I how was now. it when it first started? Oh, well, uh, it just depends on the context. <laughs> Like, I mean, for me, like, obviously speaking from a real estate world, it's like, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of like, ah, it's kind of annoying. And, and like, the, like you said, the older you get, the less you care. And yeah, because you know like there's the, another one coming exactly, down the road. Exactly, right? But then when it's, if it's early on, you're, like, stressed about it, right? But now it's just like, oh, it's just a way to learn. How can I learn? What did I do differently? And if you, 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 you're just who you are, and then you're like, oh, well, doesn't matter. That's who I am. Deal with it. Yeah, um, yeah. Either you lose them. Yeah, I mean, I've never lost anybody because of anything I've actually done or right. said that I know of. Oh, I hope not. I don't know. Not that That's I know right. of. Um, uh, but yeah. it's always budgeting or something like that. Exactly. But but I think early on that was hard to take. Yeah. And now, and I even t- tell a lot of my other friends that own companies, you know, or are entrepreneurs and, and have kind of agency structured the same way. If they lose somebody, I kind of tell them, I go, you know what I've learned? Enjoy that downtime because yeah. something big's about to come down the road. Exactly. And it happens almost yeah. every time. Yeah. And I think I would never have had the time to dedicate to this yeah. mm-hmm. if, if I had gotten the clients that I needed to right. get. Yeah. And so I very much do believe somebody up there is watching after me. For I sure. don't know what's happening. But There's opportunities me. everywhere, right? There are just opportunities yeah. everywhere. You just mm-hmm. have to like knock and open the door, yeah. right? Um. Tell me, yeah. tell me about our obviously huge, huge, uh, you know, partner, sponsor of the podcast is the Hall of Fame, and they're brilliant. Yes, they're amazing. Tell me about what that was like, you know, to, to be a part of that and we working, you know, have have them as an account. That's a yeah, that's a fairly new account. I think it's only been a few. What are we in August? September? Yeah. Um, yes, it's only been a few months, and that started out as just a PR mm-hmm. um, contract. 
Because they do need a lot of PR. I will tell you all, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame does so much more than what you even right. know it as. Oh yeah. my gosh, Mike knows because he knows them yeah. all too. It's incredible. <laughs> and I just was like, you, no one knows all the different things that you do. Right. Yes, you do, you know, you handle the Hall of Fame, right. the highest honor yeah, you can ever give it. Yeah, it's just a, a museum, but it's a lot more than just a, a building. Oh and a museum. my gosh, yeah. publishing and kids' activities yeah. and just the museum itself, it's just awesome. walking in there. Right. You know you have to be a better person because yeah. you're surrounded by these portraits. Yeah, you have these everywhere. portraits of people looking at you. And you're like, yeah, and you're rock like, star, rock yeah. star, rock star. Like, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is something to aspire to be. Right, this guy's got um, space. I know, like, yeah, right? Yeah, right. you've gone to space, yeah. and so, um, yeah, I, I got that. And then soon after, very soon after, they gave me their social media pages, mm-hmm. which is just an honor to be able to tell people yeah. stories. It really, really mm-hmm. is an honor, and I love all those department heads, and I do. I do the best I can to tell their stories, and they know it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's. It, I mean, this is the big project coming now is the induction. Yeah, I'm pumped. I, I mean, have, I get to do yeah. PR for right. Hall of Famers. Yeah. November the 12th? 18th. 18th in yeah. Tulsa. Get your yeah. tickets. They're well, on sale right now. it's great. We're going back to Tulsa. Yeah. It's going to be awesome for you as well to go back. And yeah, it's, it's I, kind I of interesting wait. to go back to Tulsa. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. Because obviously we didn't have it last We had it last year, but it was yeah, recorded it was virtual. virtual last year. And then... Um, is this the first one that you're going to that you actually... This is the first one I'm going to, yeah. See, so I went when Hal Smith became a Hall. Of Famer because, a couple yeah, years ago, yeah. so I've experienced it, and it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I'm pumped. So now to be on the PR side of it is really right, interesting yeah. and I mean, such it, an honor. I hope you still get to enjoy it, right, and not be like I'm kind of working, but I'm still gonna have a drink and have a good time. Oh and come I'm on, dra- I think I can handle in. it. Yeah. I'll work for the you know the hours I need to and right. the drinks yeah, I think after. We're gonna go up early, and make sure we get everything done. Yeah, and right. Then, then that would be fun. But I'm looking forward. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. But, so yeah. that's I mean that's an incredible client. I would never have thought myself 13 years ago that I would get to work with the people right. that I've gotten to work with. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyone that's curious, sorry, I don't have a website. Yeah. It's kind of... Send now me, I don't send want me a one. DM. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants me to. All my friends that have agencies Why? are like, yeah, let me just whip you one up. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. no, because it's too many boxes. I don't know how to tell what right. I do and all the services and all the yeah. different clients. And yeah. I said, no, just go and, on my Instagram. It's all on there. And <laughs> the, the, the personal referral is much has a much more weight to it rather than just go to my website, you know? Yeah, no. I just, yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the Skirvin, right? Because I know nothing about that hotel. But I know you know no, nothing about the Skirvin? Absolutely nothing. I mean, I know it's historical, <gasps> Mike, right? But like, We need to get you a yes. stay out there. So it's it's a, so incredible. Yeah, tell me about, I mean, I had friends who have had their, you know, their, their weddings there or whatever, but like, it's, you know, for people listening, they probably know all about it, but like, what's it like being on the PR side of a building that's pretty historic in the middle I of mean, downtown? yeah, since 1912, it's yeah, pretty incredible. I did see the new Lego incredible. thing. That I'm, I'm <laughs> yes, big, we have a Lego fan. structure that awesome. anybody needs to go visit that. There's a whole story behind it. I'm not going to get into mm-hmm. it, but um, follow them on social media and you'll see it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's in the lobby and that's really incredible. Yeah. And so doing the PR, social media, I do all their marketing. Yeah. I do a lot of email marketing. I do mm-hmm. a lot of stuff for them. Um, it's really exciting. I was a little nervous, which they know. I was a little right. nervous because they're one of my first corporate clients. Got you. And I thought... Who are they under then? Who's um, Marcus Hotels okay. in Wisconsin. Yeah. And so, you know, I've got people in Wisconsin watching what I do. And it's it's interesting, but they are the nicest group of people. Mm-hmm. So just genuine and down to earth. The GM just moved here from Wisconsin. Got you. Um, June of 2020. So he talks funny. He doesn't talk funny. Isn't that interesting? He yeah. does it. I mean, coming he's from me. He's moved around because he's <laughs> right. in the hotel business. So yeah. I think he was in Texas and stuff too. But like, he doesn't talk funny. No, he yeah. doesn't. Um, but uh, is anyway. It, is it haunted? Was it haunted in one? Where did I see I'm that? going to have no comment on that. You all is get it? to make a decision on your Don't know ask me that. that question. I want to know about that. No, here's the thing. I think people go in and they have whatever experience they yeah. want to have. It's a beautiful and hotel. If you think that it's yeah. haunted you do maybe it is and if know. you don't yeah. maybe it's not I All think right. everyone I will tell you I've never seen anything there but that's yeah. just me everybody ha- is has different there, has there been people who come to the hotel for that yes. experience yes I've oh, asked them that so cool. people ask for yeah, the 10th room, floor the room yeah. they ask for well it's a whole yeah like it's yeah. a whole floor I guess and so they ask for it and then you have people that don't ask for it right. right that don't want it yeah. and so it's just a lovely hotel it really that's is awesome. it's ginormous it's big it's yeah. not the whole hotel right is not haunted it's not yeah. yeah I mean the red piano lounge is awesome Christian's still out there doing yeah, his thing yeah Christian Pearson is still mm-hmm. out there jazz, we have a lot of amazing jazz singers yeah um, so Piano there, night, you know, it's yeah. fun. It's different. I mean, Hall of Fame, hotel, yeah. restaurants. I mean, my life is different. Homeland every was obviously day. a couple Homeland weeks ago. Homeland was yeah. just this last week, this opening. Yeah. And um, 
that was crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. That was an honor, though. I mean, it's an honor to right. build, build the community on the east side, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, the market at East Point was was how that started for me. Mm-hmm. And actually, before that, it started with with Love OKC, yeah, which with is an, yeah. Uh, yeah, with JB and OK mm-hmm. Murals um, Syndicate, which is Chris Canale mm-hmm. and a whole team of people um, asking me to to help with their social media for With Love right yeah. when they started it. And I remember talking to JB and saying, you know, I never even come out to the East Side. Yeah. And he's like, why? And I go, well, I have no reason. There's not, There's nothing yet. there wasn't right. anything. Right. I hadn't been invited to anything yeah. or done anything yeah. yet. And so what st- it started in October and I started driving and you just start driving there every single day. Mm-hmm. And it has grown so much since October. The East right. Point development's incredible. I urge everybody to go out there, go to Kindred Spirits, mm-hmm. have a drink on the patio, go to the market at East Point. Yeah. Um, go awesome. to the eatery there. It's absolutely incredible. That is what I love about yeah. community. And it's right there. It's not like you drive into Tulsa. You're like not. it's there. It's like literally it's like a few miles away. away. Yeah, 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 it's not that big a deal. But that's how community gets built. Exactly. Is people just getting together, deciding they want to do something, and it slowly starts. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's changed drastically since October. Yeah. It's not even been a year. And I've seen tons of businesses That's open awesome. there, and it I love awesome. it. Yeah. And so all communities everywhere need that. No doubt. For sure. So if anybody out there ever wants to volunteer, just let me know. Mm-hmm. Message me. Um, it's important. It's yeah. really, really important. What do you have exciting news stuff that you can talk about that's that's kind of coming up for the fall? And, and I mean, is there anything you can I talk mean, about? I mean, besides the induction for the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, I'm okay. also in a – I can't talk too much about um, – I'm kind of doing something with urban planning, sure. which is interesting. Awesome. I've never dug that yeah. deep and mm-hmm. low right. before, so I'm really pretty honored to be a part of something like that. You guys will hear about that soon. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't. I can't think of anything okay. too crazy. I mean, yeah. hey, next week it could all change. Right, right? yeah. You know, right. It changes. Yeah. You're, both of our worlds are like that. Yeah. That's the that's the beauty of it, though, isn't it? It's like keep doing what you do, and you never know what's going to come around. It's you never like want to know most, what's going to pop in your email. Yeah, the next you don't day. know who you're about to go meet exactly. when you go somewhere. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't believe it's been 13 years. I pinch myself every year. I thought COVID was going to take me out. And it didn't happen because <laughs> they always fire marketing people. <laughs> they do. That's when yeah, you need them the most. But they always fire go. marketing yeah, people. First thing to go, yeah. and that's the first one to go. Yeah. And I just. I thought Still it was going. over, but it's not. Yeah. So last thing, then we've got to talk about it: Indian food. <laughs> right? Oh, Obviously, nothing beats mum's cooking. Oh, did you see my story yeah, last night? Is yeah. that why you said yeah. that? <laughs> so, so I mean, where where do you other than cook other than mum cooking for you? Where do you go for Indian food? Yeah, I gotta say that's my biggest thing right now, you guys. I'm trying to get trying chefs to or it. restaurant groups yeah. or somebody to do a really hip. Yeah. Really cool Indian restaurant. I know we have a bunch, but like not the, the way need that I. There. There's definitely the need. There's right? definitely the, the need. Every there. person I've ever talked yeah. to loves Indian. I mean, everybody right. loves Indian yeah. food, and they're just like, yes, yes. And the thing is, my mom's. I'm from the state of Gujarat, so okay. I'm not North Indian or South Indian, and that's most restaurants are North and okay. South. So my mom has a totally different cuisine than gotcha. what anyone's ever had. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's so amazing. Yeah. And it doesn't just have to. I mean, it would be a mix. Right. Of course. But let's mix in some other food that you all have never yeah. had that right. nobody in Oklahoma City has. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah, I mean, I need to try Shish Mahal. I haven't tried that yet. It's good. It's good. Don't get their fries, but their food's good. Why would I get fries at an Indian restaurant? You gotta have curry. You oh. gotta have half and half. Oh, I guess you know what my mom Rice does and make. Fries. My yeah. mom does make fries, but yeah, she yeah, makes yeah. them really, really tiny. They just have curly. Some red like, pepper. Well, they did have good fries, and then recently they had curly fries, which they don't. I don't think they made there. It was not very good. So you know what? You know what the trick is. What's it's the, the trick? Well, you go. So you go to Shish Mahal. You get what you want. You get your curry and your rice and your naan bread. And then you hit McDonald's on the way home, and you get a large fry from McDonald's, and that's oh, it's the I'm what telling, are you I'm telling about? you, you it, just... is, it is the absolute McDonald's has the best fries, full stop, from anybody, right? As in like quick, fast, best fries, right? Now every time of day, doesn't matter if you're hungover at, at ten in the morning yes. or drunk at four a.m. Yes, McDonald's has the best fries. I mean, Freddy's so is pretty So you darn pick good. the best fries and you put them with you can like just you cannot. Sc- 
I'm telling you. Have an Indian Try palate it. and then have... Mc- I'm not going to eat McDonald's fries after having Indian food. Everyone you're crazy. listening, Everyone listening, you need to try that. No, you're not yeah, doing it. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, so regardless, then tag us in it okay. and put your post up so and tell us. Sheesh Mahal. Sheesh Mahal, I need to try. I need yeah. to try saffron. That's also new. I haven't had that one. Where's that? I have, yeah, I think it's it's new. It's over there in that same area, okay. I believe. On me. Um, it's in Bethany, I think. Okay. You know, I mean, that's where the Indian grocery store is. And yeah, so is. I think yeah. it's over there somewhere. Oh, I could be wrong. Which is where you can also buy UK chocolate from. Yeah, oh my gosh. My parents used to love UK yes. Catbury. Yeah, Catbury. Oh, they yeah. would get so excited because it does taste different than the American. It's actually got milk in it. Yeah, like ours real, is real wax. stuff. Yeah. Our chocolate's yeah. waxier. It's terrible. They used to love yeah. getting people out here who say they UK. like Hershey's chocolate. I need I mean they need to head they they're probably thinking I what you just thought about me talking about fry, you know, McDonald's fries, that's what I think about you eating a Hershey's chocolate. It's <gasps> terrible. That's okay. So that's so what we're going to do. Okay? <laughs> if you are going to uh, eat fries, I'm going to eat yeah. Hershey chocolate. Where where else do you? I mean, outside of Indian food, where else do you go for food and drinks? Oh please, Mike! Why are Come you on. asking me that? I'm all we, over the place. All right, where'd you go? Where'd you? What's the new spot? Where'd you go recently? I don't even. I mean, I'm. I'm. Gosh, I have people that literally just text me and say, "Hey, where do I go tonight? I have a yeah. date night with my husband." And, and then I'm you like, just copy and paste. I copy paragraph. and paste all the paragraphs per district and go, "Here's this district. Here's this one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know." I mean, listen, I love Palo Santo. I love their cocktails okay. and their tapas. That's one of my favorites. I wish they had an outdoor patio, but yeah. I love them. Great um, husband and wife owners. Uh-huh. They're fabulous. I mean, who doesn't love Social Capital sitting on the rooftop? That was a client of mine as well for a while. They're amazing to work with. Um, we got Jake opening soon. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a new client of mine. Super He'll pumped. love that. Shout out. Skydance yeah. Brewing. Yeah. First Native American-owned brewery in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Jake that's- Keys. Yeah, Jake Keys, uh-huh. um, across from the parlor downtown. So I'm handling that opening. That's a pretty yeah. big one, too. Right, because this um, COVID kind of just, like, extended out in a year. Didn't yeah, it? yeah, he was already supposed to be open. Uh-huh. But yeah. that brewery is incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, art with DG Smalling in there, and it's... It's going to be awesome. Oh, my gosh, you guys, totally be on the lookout for that opening, because they're amazing. Um yeah, I don't know. Where do you go for food and drinks? I don't. <laughs> you don't ever go out? I never socialize at all. I do enough of it on my phone, so I just kind of like sit at home on the weekends and do nothing. I cannot imagine. Yeah. I, I you know, just so thought born you lived born, this big life. No. Born and Brewed was like the first time I, like me and Taryn had been out yeah. in a while. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that because of COVID or just your personality? Personality. Is it because you meet people all the time through real estate in this well, podcast yeah, that you're just podcast over people? And like, yeah, and I like, and T gets home on the weekend, on a Friday, and it's like grab dinner and just chill does she want to go out no oh she she has watch. less of a need to go out than i that's like, why like born and brewed i was like i feel obligated to go because of yeah, the hall of, fame, hall of fame and i gotta meet you know i just i want to be there so I, I i totally forgot that that it was friday so i texted her at noon that day i was like hey by the way like we're going we're to actually thing. going out oh tonight. she was so pissed <gasps> off right she had a great time but like yeah but she's like, like she had a great time for people listening like if you work nine to five and the last thing you want to do on a friday night is to go and socialize with people you've never met before oh, which is right? like a dream come true for me right like she's oh, not that person so yeah. she's like i'm only doing you know i'm only doing this because like you really need me to come with you and we had a really good time because obviously, right. so born she got and to meet a lot of people awesome. that she's she only heard about. You, yeah, Shannon, and, you know, a lot of people Bruce, she's heard about. Everybody got to meet Javier. Had a hilarious time with Javier. Yes, and I yes. ended up drinking pints of wine with ice in them with Javier. Oh, like, I was like, what are you drinking? He's got his pint glass. He's like, oh, oh red wine. Oh, because and he's got. I said, it's got ice in. It. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's great. Try it. I was like, okay, now, now you're on. To red something. wine or white wine? Red on ice, with a pint. So I had a few drinks with him. <laughs> Oh, he's, I mean, he's firecracker. Oh, he's right? awesome. Yeah, so, he's great. Uh, great guy. Yeah, Born and Brewed is a great event. For people listening, you need to go to that next year. Yeah, next First year, time August you had it out, you're outdoors. 19th, maybe. It went really yeah. well. Live yeah, music. it went really, really well. It was awesome. Yeah. All the breweries come out. I mean, support your breweries, too. Yeah. I work with the Craft Association of o- Oklahoma. Okay, I'm going to get this so wrong. Cra- Oklahoma, Oklahoma Craft. Craft Brewers, no, Craft, Craft Beer. Brewers Association yeah. of Oklahoma. That's, <laughs> That's right. what yeah. it was. CBAO. Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, Tabby, for for yeah. not having that out clearly. Um, but they're amazing. Support your local breweries. They're incredible. We now have like Have you been map. up to Guthrie yet to Mac and Ike's? No, I want to. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they I saw them red, on Instagram. Red Brick Nights or whatever they have. I totally saw them on Instagram yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm going to stop by without looking at the address. I'm just assuming <laughs> yeah. it's down here somewhere. And I'm like, 30 minutes oh, to Guthrie. You're at, it's just in yeah. Guthrie. Okay, yeah. who's taking a road trip? 
I want to go. You're not going to go. You're going to hang out on the weekends at home. I need to go because Noah is Noah. um, Rachel's husband, uh, Noah Ng, plays out there every now and then. Oh yeah, yeah. Noah's going to play. I need to go out and watch him play, and then just kind of have. I mean, Guthrie's awesome. I think I could live in Guthrie because everything's there. Yeah. Like you don't have to leave too much. Really. I went there a few years ago when Mumford and Sons came out. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like 130 degrees that day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when the fire truck came out and just sprayed everybody. That was the best. That was amazing. So I do love Guthrie. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem going out there. It's not that far. Mm. It's, it's a good spot. Far. Well, um, thanks for coming down. Thanks I really appreciate this. Thanks for inviting me. I can't it's believe we time, just did this. Right? I can't believe it. But, I mean, we've obviously worked for a lot of the same people, have been around yeah. and, and done some interviews. And, you know, but this this was about time. People obviously know who you are, but they don't know who you really are. So it's good to dive into it. And I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that we didn't get to, but I'm sure we'll get to it another day. But um, for people listening, how do they follow you, reach out? How, if they feel inclined or they think, hey, I want to have a drink with this person because I need <laughs> to know what she does. Not for any business reason no. at all. Just come have yeah. a drink with me because yeah. that's my favorite thing. I think I might do that sometime and just set up at a bar. Yeah. And just, just go, like, hey, here yeah, I am. If anyone wants to out. come and just say hi, come yeah. say hi. Which is just weird to Take think somebody meetings. would even want to come say hi. Right. Like, I don't think that much of myself that that would even matter. Right. I'm just using an excuse to get out and just have a drink. Exactly. So, um, really, the best is probably Instagram, V okay. Marketing mm-hmm. on Instagram. Um, obviously, Valona Michael Marketing on Facebook, but I'm really active on Instagram. Yeah. My stories are active. Um, I think everybody always asks, you know, gosh, how do you do it all? And I say, actually, everyone is just as busy. Everyone's I just take pictures of yes, it all. That's, yeah, that's if what you took yeah. pictures of your life yeah. every single day, would you would be, busy. you're just as busy as I am. Agreed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what's the next district that's coming? I didn't ask you that. What's next? Um, I mean, Britain district I mean, is coming around. So what, yeah. That, what do you think is the next one to pop basically? I don't know on. what area. I mean, I feel like most areas, yeah. you have innovation district is Weston's really popping. Great. West, yeah, I West, yeah. yeah. I work with Western Avenue. Yeah. I work with Western Avenue. Um, Britain district is, is getting there. I worked on the sunny days mural fest. That mm-hmm. was incredible. I did all their branding, mm-hmm. um, for Britain district. And so that, that's okay. a really great area too. Yeah. I don't know. Just be on the lookout, you guys, and support. Just go support East Point. all. Yeah. yeah, go support all your local. Is JB's Pizza local... Place open yet? No, it so is not. So that's coming soon? I'm not going to talk about that okay. because I, remember, I don't want to get in trouble. I remember, he you was talk- yeah, I remember he was talking about it, so hopefully that was another thing that was coming from you know for, from him. Just awesome. follow. Follow everyone, and, okay. and you'll be in the loop. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming down. For everyone listening, I'll post the link to Vaughn's Instagram down below, and we will catch you in the next episode. Cheers. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. The home market is booming and RCB Bank is here for you. If you're in the market to buy a home, a mortgage pre-qualification will make the process much easier. Talk to one of our mortgage professionals today. RCB Bank, that's my bank. With approved credit, terms and restrictions apply, member FDIC, equal housing lender, RCB Bank, NMLS 798151. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.